Hey everyone, it's Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, what I want to talk about is not so much problematic footage, but maybe footage that you're going to be trying to find in your timeline, meaning maybe you have offline clips in your timeline and you want to be able to find them very easily. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to do it. Maybe you want to track down those offline clips in a bin. We're going to talk about that as well. And a great and super helpful tip on how you can quickly and easily figure out which clips you haven't used in your timeline. A very common scenario, you have a timeline that you've laid out, producer, director comes back and says, well, I don't know, maybe this shot's not working. Can you show me what we didn't use from what we shot? In this lesson, I'm going to show you how quick and simple it is to do that so you can call that footage up for a producer or director sitting in the seat beside you lightning quick. Now, as always, before we get rolling, I want to give a big shout out to Video Guys, our sponsor. Don't forget, if you're looking for Media Composer subscription licenses, head on down to the show notes below for the links. You can head on over to Video Guys website, get that coupon code of MC101 to get 5% off your subscription license. And as always, I want to remind you that if you are interested in one-on-one -on -one Media Composer training, you can always send me an email at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail. Dot com. All of the lessons are recorded for you to save for your future reference. And I always give discounts if you want to get in and do multiple lessons to get you up to speed on whatever project you happen to be working on. And last but certainly not least, I want to remind you that if you find this tutorial useful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it across social media to help us get the word out there about Media Composer. To all those editors in Premiere or in Resolve who maybe need to jump into Media Composer and get a project done, or maybe you've just been away from Media Composer for a while and you just want to freshen up on, on some great tips and tricks, hopefully everybody can get something, whether it's a lot or even just that one little tidbit out of every lesson that we put up on the YouTube channel. All right, so as you can see, we are in Avid Media Composer, and something that's important to keep in mind when we do these tutorials is that many people are coming at this from a standpoint of it's their version of Media Composer on their own systems. They've started things up. Everything is going the way that it should right from the beginning, but many people get into a situation where maybe the system that they're sitting in front of isn't their own. Maybe they're at a freelance gig. They're jumping right in. The system's been set up a certain way. So all of the check boxes and bells and whistles that you might be accustomed to being turned on automatically with a brand new fresh and solid media composer maybe aren't turned on by default. And this is a perfect example right here. You'll see that we have our timeline and everything looks great in our timeline except for one minor little problem that drives fear into the hearts of many editors, and that is our gray media offline screen. Now, that media is not actually offline. Well, it is actually offline. What I actually did is just moved it out of the Avid Media Files folder just for the purposes of this lesson. And what I want to focus on right now is strictly just the timeline window and talking about how we can get more information in the timeline window if it's not turned on by default. So, what we want to do in the timeline is to draw our attention to the fast menu located right down here. I'm simply going to click on it. What I'm going to do is navigate right up here to clip color. Now what the clip color actually represents, and you'll remember a few lessons ago, I talked about the clip color in relationship to the bin. You'll see that I have the color column here. And by setting the color of the clips to be different colors, if we navigate over to source, what that's going to do is impact what the clips look like in our timeline. Now, for me personally, I don't normally like to edit like that because I like for the timeline and really the clip color window to show me very specific information, like, for example, offline clips or potentially linked clips. I don't deal a lot with proxy media, but really these two are big ones for me offline linked clips. Now, you'll see mixed, mixed rates here as well as SD, HD. Now, if you're dealing with a lot of SD and HD clips in one timeline, that's also a good thing to have. But what I'm going to do is simply just turn all of these options here to be on. Now, I'm going to leave timeline local and source as they were being off. Now, as soon as I come down and say, OK, you'll see immediately in the timeline, I see that something's wrong. And I love the fact that offline media is marked as red. It's one of those danger zone, danger zone, danger zone. This is a great, simple and quick way to know if something is going on in your timeline. 
I can see there's an issue right there. If I obviously navigate down, I can see that that clip is media offline. Now, if I had a clip that was linked to, obviously I could bring that in. And what would happen is, is that if I had that dropped into my timeline, it would appear as purple. So again, very visual, very simple way to know. Because remember, like I always say, please, please, please do not, friends don't let friends edit with linked media. Linked media is only designed to be brought into Media Composer and then transcoded or consolidated to actual working media. All right, because I've seen so many people try to export timelines and they get errors and they're like, why am I getting this error? Well, it's because this clip that's linked in there, Media Composer is just not liking it when it tries to export. All right, so this window here, the clip color window, fantastic way to get visual representation of exactly what's going on to track down and find. I'm not going to call it problematic media, but it's media that might not necessarily be like what's going on with all of the other media, specifically offline. Now let's take that concept from here into our bins. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna close the clip color window. I'm gonna say, okay, there we go. And I'm just gonna open scene A because I know that I have, actually it's actually scene B that I'm having a problem with here. So let's go to scene B now. Of course, the only real way for me to tell that I'm actually having a problem with this shot from scene B is one of two ways. I can double click my way through it to figure out what, there we go, to take five, to figure out what's going on. Or of course, what I can do is simply over top of this clip, hit F7, hit F8 to match frame and find bin to send me right back to the problematic clip in my bin. But what if we're in a situation where, I mean, my timeline's only like a minute and a half long. What if we're in a situation where you have a 30 minute show and you're starting to see media pop up that's offline? How are you gonna get in and quickly track it down in your bin? Well, like I said, in this case, we have one clip, very easy to track down, but if you've got 30 clips and maybe you just need to go into a bin to figure out what's going on, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. Now, keep in mind, these menus that I'm showing you are actually gonna appear in a couple places and I'll show you what I mean by that right now. So because we're dealing with a bin issue, trying to figure out what's going on with the clips that are located inside my bin, in the bin dropdown, you're gonna notice an option called select. All right, now I'm not gonna jump ahead even though I know you see offline items there already, but I'm not gonna jump ahead just yet because I wanna show you that in the bin fast menu, that option is there as well. Now you'll notice there's not as many options and I'll just show you what's different in just a second. I'm really gonna focus on three of them. What I'm gonna focus on is reverse, media offline, and media relatives. All right, actually I'm gonna show you the unreferenced clips as well because that's an important one as well, all right? Now offline items, fairly self-explanatory. What I'm gonna do with any open bin is to simply navigate up to the bin dropdown, come down to select, and tell Media Composer to show me any items that are currently offline. You'll see, boom, in one second, I now know that that clip or potentially multiple clips are offline in my bin, all right? Good and quick way to find that out. Now, let's navigate back up to bin. I'm gonna come back down to select. Now, I'm gonna leave reverse out of it for now. Now, you'll notice that we have a couple other options, media relatives, and unreferenced clips. I'm leaving out unrendered titles because we haven't really talked about titles yet. I'm going to leave sources out for now because I'll be honest, I've been using Media Composer for 25 years. I've never selected sources before. Um, so let's talk about unreferenced clips because this is actually a good one because this actually came from a question that was asked in the show notes a couple lessons ago where somebody asked, they said, well, we're going through and we're talking about dupe detection to see what's duplicated. So how can I figure out what I've used and what I haven't used inside of my bins? Well, this is how you're gonna do this. Right now I have my sequences bin open and I have my clip bin open, scene B. And what I want to know is, which of these clips haven't I used in my timeline? Now what I should actually do, since a lot of these clips are scene A clips, is I'm gonna open the scene A bin because this is actually a bit of a better way to do this. So with the sequences bin open, and my scene A bin open, I'm gonna make sure scene A is active. I'm gonna come back to my bin dropdown. I'm gonna to come to select, and what I'm gonna do is ask Media Composer to show me any unreferenced clips. What that's asking Media Composer to do, and what I love about it is it actually gives you a little pop-up. And what the pop-up basically says is that select unreferenced clips is gonna select all the clips that are not referenced by any sequence in a currently open bin. 
References to clips from bins that are closed are not taken into account. So all it's worrying about is bins that are open right now. And what it's going to do is it's going to say, okay, we have a sequence. Keep in mind, this could be multiple sequences. And what you're going to show me, Media Composer, is only the clips that aren't referenced. There's no link to them. There's no reference of them being in any of these sequences. So as soon as I say, okay, what this is now showing me is clips that are not used in my timeline or timelines and open bins. So this is a great way. Let's say you made like a music montage and you had a whole bunch of shots and the client came back and said, oh, you know what? What else do you have? What other footage do you have that you didn't use? No problem. I'm going to open the music montage sequence bin. I'm going to open the bin that has all my clips in it. I'm going to say, well, you know what, Media Composer? Show me the clips that aren't referenced in that timeline. Boom. Okay, well, great. There's what I haven't used. Now I can string these out in a timeline to show them to the producer, director, or whoever so they can pick a different shot that they like. All right. So that's a great way to quickly get in and see the clips that you haven't used. What you can also do is you can navigate to bin, you can come back down to select, and say, show me the media relatives. Now you'll notice that when I did that, nothing actually happened. The reason being is that Media Composer doesn't know what, what I want to see the media relatives of. What I'd like to see is the media relatives of my first timeline, okay, of this sequence. A media relative is anything that is relative to that timeline. Anything that lives in that timeline or is a child of that timeline is what I want Media Composer to show me. What I'm going to do is navigate back to bin and say select media relatives. Now, I think in some cases what actually has to happen is, is that I actually have to have them both in the same bin here. So hold on one second here. Let me just drop this in here like such. And I'm going to say media composer bin select your media relatives. And now you can see that it's going to say, okay, of this timeline, these are the two relatives of it. Okay. Now, where does this actually come into play? Well, let me show you because it's actually a clever way that if you're ever at the point where you want to clean up media, this is how you can do it. What I'm going to do is just stick our timeline back into its bin, into its sequences bin, and I'm going to open the media tool. Now, we're going to talk more about the media tool in its own dedicated lesson, but this is a very quick way that you can get in and delete media from a project, a very quick and visual way to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all of my drives here. I'm actually just going to select these two. I'm going to hold Control or Command to select those two. I can even select the Extreme SSD. And what I'm going to do is just select the current project and I want to see the media files that are associated with this project. All right, I'm going to say OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Media Composer, now you'll see that it actually, oh, it actually didn't select anything. I'm actually kind of glad it did that. OK. Now you're probably thinking, Kev, why would you be glad that Media Composer didn't show you anything? Well, let me explain because it's actually directly related to the previous lesson. So in the last lesson, we talked about media management. I showed you the fantastic way to get media into Media Composer utilizing DaVinci Resolve or really any external application like Assimilate Scratch, like DaVinci Resolve, or even Media Encoder if you wanted to go that route. All right. Now it does bring about with it one major problem. And the major problem it brings about is that because Media Composer wasn't the one that crunched that media, it wasn't the one that transcoded or consolidated it, it is actually not, I'm not gonna say that it's not considered Avid Media, but it's media that's not referenced by the media tool inside of Media Composer because the media was created by a separate application and not by Media Composer. So to be honest, utilizing the media tool in this case is not something that we can do, but it doesn't mean that I can't show you how the concept works. All right. So let's just do it this way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my timeline back in here. And what I'm going to do is with my timeline selected, much like I would in the media tool, and let's just pretend we're cleaning some media up here. What I'm going to do is with this timeline selected, I'm going to say to Media Composer, hey, Media Composer, you know what I'd like you to do? I would like you to show me the media relatives for this timeline. All right, so it's shown me in this bin the two clips that are associated with this timeline. Now, keep in mind, I understand that I have other bins with other media, and obviously all of this media would be in one location, like in the media pool. So I know that anything that's not currently selected is media that hasn't been used. And if this timeline was approved and good to go the way that it is, I can delete that other media. Now, 
to be honest, in this case, for me to go, okay, I know it's this one and these ones here, and then I can delete those because they're not my timeline is one way to do it. But what if it was like this? It was like these two and this one and maybe that one and maybe that. You can see how this can become a little bit cumbersome. All right. So what I'm going to do is very quickly figure out which media is not my timeline by selecting my timeline, going to bin, select media relatives. And then what I'm going to do is simply reverse that selection. By reversing the selection, I know that those are not media relatives. So conceivably, I could now hit delete, delete those clips, and we'd be good to go in our timeline. And to be honest, why don't we just do that? Now, you'll see I've got clips from scene B, but that's fine. So what I'm going to do here is with this timeline selected, I'm going to navigate up to bin. I'm going to come down. I'm going to say, show me the media relatives. Fantastic. I'm now going to go to bin. I'm going to go to select and we're going to reverse that to show me everything I didn't use. Here we go. I'm going to hit delete and everything should still stay online in my timeline, which it did. Just that one clip that's offline, which was offline before, which is fine. But now you'll see that in my bin, the only clips that are actually online are the ones that we've used in our timeline and everything else that we're not using has now been deleted and we've cleaned up some space. Now, let me just finish by saying this. With hard drives these days being as, I'll say, as plentiful as they are, don't be getting in and deleting things. You would only get in and delete things at the very end of a project. And we're going to talk all about project cleanup and Media Composer and what the best way to do it is. But to be honest, if you're talking about low res offline footage, leave it all in there. Like I said, you're talking about, you know, you can fill up a four terabyte hard drive with hours and hours and days and days worth of footage. So don't be getting in and deleting stuff to free up space. To be honest, it's better in a lot of cases just to take the time, spend the money, buy another hard drive to plug in and keep working with than worrying about accidentally deleting footage that you might either need in your timeline or might need down the road. And you're just going to cause yourself a whole bunch of headaches trying to get that media back. All right, now I think that that's a good place to leave off for this lesson. So don't forget, as you're working, a fantastic resource to use is the select option specifically for offline items and unreferenced clips. Those two right there, the offline, obviously problematic clips that are offline, more so the unreferenced clips, a quick way to get in and say, hey, Media Composer, show me what I haven't used so I can show that to the client so I can find a replacement shot for something Super quick and super simple. So don't forget that if you found this tutorial useful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it across social media. Help us get the word out there about Media Composer to everyone who needs to get in. Whether you're starting a project or just jumping in to do something, please pass these tutorials along to help out everyone who might need it. And as always, I'd like to give a big shout out and thanks to video guys. Don't forget, Head on over to the website in the link down below to get your Media Composer subscription. Use that coupon code of MC101 to get 5% off your Media Composer license purchase. And as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. Thanks a lot for watching.